Nobody have lived on this earth forever. How good you are, how bad you are, how weak you are, how strong you are. You are going to die. Because we know we belong to Allah. We are going back to Him. Everything that we receive is from Him. Where do you spend your time? Where do you spend your money? All will be questioned by Allah. Human will never get anything from Allah except what they have earned in this dunya. So the trial of the grave starts here, not there. Ladies and gentlemen, with me on the stage now is Sheikh Hussein Yi. He was born to a Chinese Buddhist family and reverted to Islam in 1968. From 1972 to 1978, he studied in the Islamic University in Medina, Saudi Arabia. From 1978 to 1980, he lived and studied in Damascus University, Syria. In 1981, he became the advisor to the Cambodian Muslim refugees in Paris. From 84 to 85, he is the director of the Islamic Center of Hong Kong, China. He kept very busy. In the 80s to 1994, he was also a counselor in Perkim, Malaysia. Since 1994 until today, he has been the president of the Al Qadim Association, to which he is also the founder. Al Qadim Association is an association for dawa and taking care of orphans and single parent families. He has been organizing dawa and ibadah camps or invitation to Islam and worship camps for youth around Southeast Asia Pacific, London, the United States of America, Canada, and the Middle East. Ladies and gentlemen, inshallah. Without any further waiting, inshallah, we will introduce Sheikh Hussein Yi to the podium to give us a lecture on Trials of the Grave. Trials of the Grave by Hussein Yi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يتلل فلا حادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تق الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث من حما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به وأرحم إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويخفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي حد محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أو كما قال أحييكم بتحية الإسلام وهي تحية الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Allah is the creator of all things and the sender of all prophets and messengers and the revealer of all truth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to shower his mercy and blessing upon his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi and all other messengers and the family of all the prophets and for those who follow the teaching of the prophet till the day of judgment on the behalf of my family on the behalf of my committees of al qadim malaysia we would like to convey their warm salam to all the brother and sister tonight my jama'ah inform me please Sheikh Hussein Yi, when you meet the brother in Chennai, don't forget to convey our warm salam to all of them. They know all of you. They knew about this occasion because we always talk about what the Muslim in Chennai, especially Wish and Peace of Islam, have done these few years. Fellow brother and sister in Islam, Allah said, Kuntum khaira ummah. You only can be the best nation if you do da'wah. And Allah said again, Waltakum minkum ummah. Among you, all Muslim, there must be a group that call people to Islam. And this is the best group. And we believe that you will be the best. We hope that the people of Chennai will be the best. Do you think you can be the best, brothers? Do you want to be the best? Alhamdulillah. You can be the best. Allah never said that only the Arab can be the best. No. Only the Chinese can be the best. No. Only the European can be the best. No. He said, if you want to be the best, you carry out the work of da'wah. You become the best. And Allah have given us sign. We are very blessed and proud to see that the Muslim in India have come forward in the field of da'wah. Dr. Zakhar Naik in Mumbai and all the brother, the good brother who are with Peace Vision of Islam and many other groups, they are coming all out to call people to Islam. May Allah bless all of you. May Allah make us the best ummah. I'm ashamed to my people in my country, we don't have this kind of activities yet. We hope they will follow suit. We hope that this is the best example for the new ummah. At our time, fellow brother and sister in Islam, we know that the best job in the sight of Allah is not to become an engineer, a doctor, to become an actor or actress. The best job in the sight of Allah is to be the caller to Islam, to be a da'i. And you have seen what your children can do. And we believe that they are going to lead this nation and they are going to be the leader of the world, insha'Allah. Not only to be the leader of India, no. A da'i can be the leader of the world. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he's not just a leader among the Arabs. The Sahaba, Khalifa, Abu Bakr, Umar, Osman, wa Ali, they are not just a Khalifa for the Arabs, no. For the Muslim in the world. For mankind. Fellow brother and sister in Islam, we know that life is short. Allah said, Kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut. Allah said that every living thing will taste death. Everything will end. We have seen this. We have witnessed a lot of people have died. Our family, our loved one, our children, our father, our mother, our wife, our husband, they are no more with us. One day they were with us. The second day they are not with us anymore. That is life. That is the truth of life. Every single living thing will taste death. 
and Allah remind us ay nama taqunu yudriqukumul maut walau kuntum fi buruji musayyida wherever you are you can be anywhere you can be in the palace you can be in Mecca you can be in Chennai you can be in the cave you can live yeah you can be in the space is wherever you are Allah said death will overtake you even you are in a fortress built up strong and high nobody have lived on this earth forever how good you are how bad you are how weak you are how strong you are how poor you are how rich you are you are going to die and nobody can say no i'm not going to die i have all the money with me i can corrupt the angel of death i can pay him off when he come to me yeah i give you some money just leave me alone no you know that i know that whether you are muslim you are not yet muslim you know you are going to die but the difference is that we as muslim has been reminded by allah wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun make sure that you will not die until you submit to allah that's why we are here we are going to die but we want to die in the way that allah is pleased with us for a good reason for a purpose we do not want to just die like anybody died no we know that life is not going to end after you die no this is the beginning of our everlasting life allah said alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin can we recite this ayah together alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin all praise belong to him allah who is allah rabb he is the creator the sustainer of what alamin Allah is not the God to the Muslim only, no. He is not just the God for the Arabs, no. But Allah said, He is the Lord of the universe, the creator. He created everything that you see and things that you don't see. The jinn, the inns, animals, angels, the star, the moon, the sun, the sky, the galaxies whatever you can see whatever you can see all is the creation of allah he said i am the lord of the universe i create everything and i sustain all my creation the first thing that allah have created us before we move to this world all of us in the first alam alamin i'm going to explain about what is alamin the first alam is alam arwah all of us was in the world of the soul when all of us was in the world of the soul allah asked uh, alas to be rabbikum qalu bala am i not your lord all of us said of course oh allah you are our lord none of us go against allah not even one soul go against him why because our soul is still pure and clean with the will of allah allah transfer us to the second world the world of rahim in our mother's womb allah transfer us to the second world alam rahim and allah still asks us alas to be rabbikum qalu bala am i not your lord we said yes of course you are our lord at that time there is no disbeliever everyone is a believer there is none who is not a muslim every soul is a muslim everyone then allah allow us to move to the third alam we are here now we are in the third alam the middle alam the middle world we call alam dunya we are in the world now brothers and sisters and when we were born every child born they are born clean fitra pure whether you are black whether you are white yellow brown arabs non-arab every child born 
they are pure and clean nobody was born as a non-muslim nobody was born as a disbeliever everyone was born as a muslim because our prophet said Kullu maulid yulad ala fitrah. every child born fitrah pure and clean muslim fa'abawahu yuhawidanihi aw yunassiranihi aw yumajjisanih it is we as parents who have corrupted them because we forget Allah we make them forget Allah because we become disbeliever and we make them become disbeliever because we are disobedient to Allah we make them disobedient to Allah this is what the Prophet said we worship the world they worship the world we worship gold and silver now they are living for gold and silver we worship idols they worship idols we worship all the other things now they also are worshiping the thing that we worship it's not their fault and that's why we are here today to remind us before we go to the grave because the trial of the grave start here not start there it start here if you want to be safe when you go down six feet below you must get yourself prepared now and that's why Allah sent prophets after prophet messenger after messengers and that's why peace vision of Islam organized conference after conference gathering after gathering is because we are here to remind each other because we care for each other because we love every one of us whether you are Muslim you are not yet Muslim we love all of you that's why we are here brother and sister if you don't care about you we don't love you we don't have to come here we just stay in our house in our hometown with our own family why must we travel thousands of miles and come here? Because we care for you. Why must peace vision of Islam spend millions of rupees to organize this kind of? Because they care for you. They want you to be part of the nation of Islam. They want you to be part of the Khair Ummah, the best nation. So we hope that all the brothers and sisters who are here with us will grab the opportunity don't miss out the great opportunity not for here but for the hereafter fellow brothers and sisters in islam and whether you are not yet muslim why we call muslim because we hope everyone will become muslim and those who are not yet muslim now it's not because of their fault it is our fault we don't care about them we never bring Islam to them if Prophet Muhammad don't care about us Islam will never enter India he care about us Islam will not enter China will not enter Malaysia we don't know who we are and Allah said in the Quran Ya ayuhallazina amanu attaqallah wal tanzuru Nafsumakadamatlihadwatakullahinallahabirumbimatamalun. I am sure majority of the brother and sister here, even our children, have memorized this ayah beautiful ayah of Allah Allah who have created us from nothing we didn't ask Allah to create us we didn't ask Allah to make us an Indian or Chinese or Arabs black white brown nobody asked that it just happened it's Allah's will he said kun fayakun even Allah has created all of us different and make us into nation and tribes but Allah is telling us 
We are no stranger. We are not enemy. We are all like a big family, the children of Adam and Eve. Why we are different if we are from the same father and the same mother? It's Allah's wish. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ Allah said, with the sign and the power of Allah, I make you different in language and color. Allah is the one who makes us different. Not we want to be different. But at the end of the day, Allah said, أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ And before that, Allah said, لِتَعَارَفُ I make you different so that you get to know each other. You learn how to live together as a big family. Help each other. Love each other. Share with each other. And the best among you, brother and sister, is not whether he's rich or poor, white or colored. The best among you is the one who are more piety to Allah, more faithful and obedient to Allah. You can be the best than me, than all the speakers, if you carry out the mission of the Prophet, da'wah illallah. You can be. Our children will be the best. They have shown us what they can do. They have been able to stand in front of us and deliver the message to us. Alhamdulillah. Then Allah said, O oh, you who believe in me, be obedient to me. It is not sufficient to believe in God. But you must obey Him. Be obedient to Him. Then only you get the blessing of Allah. An example, it is not sufficient to be an Indian citizen. But you must obey the law of the country. Then you will be blessed too. It's not good to say, I have a father, I have a mother. But you don't obey your father and your mother. So, obeying is very important. Allah said, look, look into yourself. Don't look into other people. Don't point at other people. The Chinese saying, one finger pointing out, three finger pointing back inward don't keep on pointing others you 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 don't, don't have to do that point to yourself look into yourself what have you prepared for your next day your next life your tomorrow and your tomorrow is not on the earth is six feet below there is our tomorrow And Allah said, وَلَا تَكُونُ كَلَّذِينَ نَسَ اللَّهِ Don't become like the people. Don't become like the people who forget Allah. Why? When you forget Allah, Allah will forget you. When you ignore Allah, Allah ignore you. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, what will happen to us when we go back to Allah? He don't recognize us. He don't acknowledge us. We are gone. We will be the loser. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us again, Kullu nafsin za'iqatul maut wa innama tuwaffawna wujurakum yawm al Everyone shall taste death and only on the day of judgment, the day of qiyamah, resurrection, shall you be paid fully by Allah. What? is the thing that can save you and me when we leave this world not your money not your children when we talk about dollar and sand gold and silver listen to the saying of the prophet wa an abi huraira radiyallahu an qal قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الأبد مالي مالي وإنما له من ماله ثلاثة ما أقل فأفنى أو لبس فأبلى أو تصدق فأمضى رواه مسلم 
the prophet said every one of us will say this is my money this is my property this is my car this is my house this is my business everybody will claim that this is his whatever money you have now in your pocket you will say this is my money the hundred rupees the five hundred rupees that is with you now you say that it's yours true or not brother is that your money whatever you have in your pocket is yours or not I don't hear you brother if you say it's not yours you must throw it out it's haram for you to keep something that don't belong to you there's a big box waiting for you from vision and peace of Islam anything is not yours take it out don't keep it don't bring it back it's haram but you say it's yours so nobody can take it from you it's true it's yours but the Prophet said nothing is yours except three nothing you can say is mine except three number one when the money what can the money do to you can you eat your money brother can you swallow your money you love money true yes can you just chew it now can you just eat one of you can you just open take 100 rupee and just eat do you like to do that if you do that what will people say about you he's crazy you are crazy you eat money money is not for you to eat money is for you to spend then the prophet said what is yours is when the money turned into food you buy a food a burger chapati tose tose you say tose or tose when you buy it's not yours it's still not yours maybe your friend can, oh please give me i'm not i'm hungry can you give me the dosa oh take it my friend it's not yours after you consume it when inside your stomach that is yours nobody can take it anymore the money that you buy water tea coffee pepsi that is yours after you drink after you drink that is yours before you drink it's still not yours you may die before you drink then it's not yours the money that you turn into dress you wear it wear and tear that is yours but what is in your pocket is in my pocket is not ours yet if you want it to be yours no problem do you want all the money with you to be yours forever brother and sister please tell me do you want the money that you have with you now to be yours please i don't hear you again yes i want my money to be mine alhamdulillah do you love money do you love money brothers you must be true to yourself yes i love money I love gold, I love silver. You ask your wife, do you love money or you love me? Your wife will say, diamond is forever. Not my husband. My husband is not forever. It's for some time only. But diamond is forever. You can love diamond, no problem. But if you really love this money, you want all this thing to be with you and only with you and forever be with you there's only one thing you can do only one thing i do not know where is the box now if you see the box of donation calling you to participate for the sake of allah any penny any dollar you spend for allah tonight is yours you has three ring sisters take out one ring for allah if you don't take it out if you die your husband will take three away and put in another finger and you if you come back to life you will kill your husband for that but if you want the ring to be yours give one of your ring for allah sake so that you save your problem in the grave you remember the more you have 
the more you'll be questioned in the grave. So whatever you love, you really love, you don't want it to depart from you, you must depart it now for the sake of Allah. It will be registered in the sight of Allah. This is your investment. You have contributed for Allah. Allah will keep it for you forever. Forever is yours. There is the best investment. There is the best contribution. If you say you love your money, you must save your money for your future. Listen what the Prophet say again. The Prophet is here to tell you about real life. We are not living in a life of fantasy. We are facing real life. We are going to die. We do not want to die and then we regret. What is the point you regret later on? It's too late. When you go down, you're not going to come back anymore. It's a one-way ticket. Everything one way. When I come to Chennai, two way, I buy two ticket, two way. Back Saturday, I go back to my country. But going down there is one way ticket. And the Prophet have told us that in some of the hadiths, it's 70,000 of my ummah will cross the Sirat in the day of judgment, will go to paradise without any problem. After the Prophet crossed the Sirat, the bridge to paradise, 70,000 of his ummah will follow them without any problem. They will cross the bridge like lightning. <laughs> they are over there. They are in paradise now. Allah Akbar. So some companion asked the Prophet, why 70,000? Why they can go to paradise so fast like a lightning? Because the Prophet explained, these people, everything that Allah gave them, they have given it back to Allah. There's no more question for them in the day of judgment. It's like when you travel, if you travel by flight, when you reach the other airport, you just bring your briefcase. No extra luggage. Do you need to go to the custom? There are two custom. One red line and green lane. Red lane, green lane. Green lane for people who have nothing to declare. No good to declare. The custom see you travel with one bag. He will never stop you. He knows there's nothing for you to declare. So people who go back to Allah without a lot of dunya, they can go to paradise very easy. But not you, not me. We will have a lot of problem when we die because there will be a lot of checking from the custom officer. We have so much thing with us. You want to know whether you have a lot of things or not? You try to shift to another house. You got to prepare a big lorry to move your things. There's so much thing that we got to carry with us. The Prophet said from Anas ibn Malik, Qala qala Rasulullah. This is a beautiful word from the Messenger of Allah who know about what is going to happen in the grave and what is going to happen after we die. We don't know. We have not been there yet. If I am there, I cannot come back. Who knows? Allah who created us, He knows everything. And He informed His messenger to inform us, to tell us, so that we are prepared, so we will not regret. يَدْبَعُ الْمَيْتَ ثَلَاثَةً فَيَرْجِعُ إِسْنَانِ وَيَبْقَى مَعَهُ وَاحِدٌ The Prophet said, everyone who is living today is going to die. And when you die, there are three things that will follow you. Three things will follow you. Where? They will follow you to the grave. They are going to follow you to the graveyard. Two will return 
and only one will be loyal to you. One will be your best friend, but the two will return, will not stay with you for long. Yadbauhu ahluhu wa maluhu wa amalu. Your family is going to follow you. When the funeral is on, when the coffin is on, you have your family, your wife, your children, your father, your mother, your friend will follow you to send you to the graveyard. Wama luhu. Maybe you have some property. You have some degree. You may have some medal was given by you from the government. You may bring your medal with you. You can bring your diamond, your gold, your silver with you. No problem. And your deeds amal. Two will return. Your family is going to say bye bye, my darling. Do you think you say, oh, I love you. We will live together and die together. You think they will do that? Before you get married, you can make promise, empty promise. I love you, my darling. The sky will be my witness. The tree be my my witness. I love you, my full heart. Everything in me is yours. I want to live and die with you. You say okay, <laughs> but when he die, bye bye. <laughs> I'm not going to follow you. Crazy. It's true. That is life. How you love your father. How you love your wife. How beautiful she is! How good your husband is! How beautiful your son is! When they die, they die. You are not going to die with them. That is their life. They have their time. You have your time. Everybody will die. Everybody will taste the first kiamah. The first kiamah is our own death. The second kiamah, everybody die. There is a second kiamah. For your death. أَحْلُهُ وَمَالُهُ وَيَبْقَ مَعَهُ أَمَلُهُ Everyone will return back and left you alone. We are alone now. Who will be with us in the grave? Our deeds, our amal, the good thing that we have done. If you have called people to Islam, that is your good deeds. Whatever the person do when he was alive, you get all the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Every dollar you spend in the vision of Islam, peace vision of Islam, they use this money to propagate Islam, to call people to Islam. You will get your share. Everybody will profit. That is the benefit we are here today because we want to make everybody become a winner. We do not want to be a loser. And fellow brother and his and sister in Islam, don't forget that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala have remind us in many ayah. One of the ayah is very simple. You can read in the ayah in the surah of Takathur. How do you begin with this ayah? What is the first ayah? Do you remember, brother? Can somebody help me? Al-Hakumuttaka Thur At the end of the ayah How do the Allah end this ayah? Can somebody help me? Somebody, somebody use the mic I want somebody to participate Come on, come on, somebody Somebody, please, brother, come The ending of the surah Huh? Anil Naim Yawma Yawma is in Anil Naim What is the meaning of that? Allah is telling us Remember Everything that I give you Every ni'mah In the day of judgment I am going to ask you How do you make use of this ni'mah? Allah did not give us for free Allah do not create us without a reason and purpose. Allah have said, "Afahasibtum annama khalaqnakum abasa." Do you think that we created you without a purpose? 
Do we marry without a purpose? Do we work without a purpose? Do you come here without a purpose? Everybody do something with a purpose. Let us alunna yawma izin anin na'im. Let us alunna. Allah said, you are sure to be questioned by Allah in the day of judgment about what Allah have given you on this earth. 50 years, 60 years, 70 years. One wife, two wives, three wives, four wives. Money, gold, silver. Allah have given you so much. What have you make use? Where do you spend your time? Where do you spend your money? All will be questioned by Allah. But if you do it correctly now, you have less problem in the grave. Because when you go down there, brother and sister, nobody is going to be with you except your deeds. And then the angel Munkar Nakir will come. He is sure to be there waiting for you. And he is going to start the Q&A. After the ending of the lecture, we have Q&A. But there, there is another Q&A. The Q&A, you must pass. You fail, you have big, big problem. If you fail here, we can teach you. Over there, nobody teach you anymore. You can knock on, hey, Sheikh Hussein, please come and help me. I cannot help you then. When I go down there also, other Sheikh cannot help me. Because Allah said, Wala taziru waziratun vizra ukhra. Nobody will carry the sin of another person. Everyone will be responsible for his, for her own sins. Human will never get anything from Allah except what they have earned in this dunya. So the trial of the grave starts here, not there. There's nothing for you to do there anymore. What you want to do, you got to do it here. So the prophets say, from Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu call. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أول ما يسأل عنه العبد يوم القيامة من النعيم من النعيم رواه ترمذي وابن حبان. The prophet said the first thing that Allah is going to ask you in the day of judgment when He call all of us up, none of you can escape. Everybody will got to stand up in front of Allah. No one is allowed to sit like now what you are doing today. I am standing, you are sitting. Over there, no chairs. No chair. Whether you are king or emperor, billionaire, no chair for you. Here at least you have some chairs. If you are king, you have a special chair. The king don't sit like you. He cannot sit your chair. And you cannot sit his chair too. It's dangerous to sit the chair of the king. But over there, everybody will be standing. Standing. And you know how long you go to stand there, brother? 50,000 years. Allah Akbar. We don't even stand for five hours yet. You, but you got to stand 50,000 years. And there is only one day in Qiyamah. That's why they say, Yawmul Qiyamah, not Ayyamul Qiyamah. If Allah said Ayyamul Qiyamah, many days of Qiyamah. Only one day, not even a night. But one day is equivalent to 50,000 years. Everybody got to stand for 50,000 years. But Allah Kareem, for those who have deeds, who have prepared themselves, who have invested, now in Akhirah, they have no problem. For those who bring up your children to be good children, righteous children, like the children you have seen, they are trained to do da'wah, to call people to Islam from young. 
and if they become the caller of Islam all of us as parents will receive the blessing of Allah it's a great investment the mother the father in the time of the Prophet when they have children the only thing in their dream in their life is to make sure these children become the righteous people Waladan Saleh because all of us know brother and sister this is the last hadith that I like to share with you the Prophet said Iza mata ibn Adam in qata'a amalahu illa bisalatha that means every children of Adam will die Muslim, not Muslim, people who are not yet will die. You die, the Prophet said, in qata'a amalu. You are cut off from this world. You have nothing to do with this world anymore. If you commit a crime after you die, the court cannot sue you anymore. If the court sue you, send you a summon in the grave, he is crazy. How can you summon the death? Nothing. You are cut off. Illa except three things that still can save you three things that can help you in your grave and in the day of judgment number one sadaqatin jariyah if you have some money give it for the sake of Allah you have a land you have a house anything that is useful you donate it to wish and peace of Islam say make use for the sake of Allah for da'wah and when people come to Islam, they have no place to stay. You put them in the halfway house that you have made waqaf. You have a house for the orphan, the aitam, for the poor. Whoever make use of this place, you get the reward. Ongoing reward from Allah. And knowledge, whatever you know, pass it down to your children. Teach them Fatiha. Teach your friend Islam. Teach them how to pray. And when they start to pray, because you have made an effort to teach them, you will get the reward. And when they teach their friend, you also will get the reward. It's a chain of reward. Allah is going to reward all of us with the little effort, not much, just little. The little you spend now, Allah will give you more in the hereafter. And the last one is waladun saleh yad'ula. You see the beauty of the saying of the prophet. He said waladun saleh. The prophet never said ibn saleh bintu saleh. He said waladun saleh. What is the meaning of walad here? That means any children that is under your care, you make them become righteous children. You die, they become good children. They pray, they fast, they do da'wah, they make zikr. You will get all the reward from Allah. Even they are not engineer, doctor, it's not a big problem. Because when you go down six feet under, Allah is not going to ask you about your doctorate. Allah is not going to ask you one question about your professionhood. Whatever you spend for dunya, just for dunya, in the secular education, not even one question Allah asks about that. But Allah will ask about your deen. Ma rabbuk, wa ma dinuk, wa man nabiyuk. He will ask you that. Waladun saleh, righteous children. It can be your own children your adopted children, your nephew, your niece, it can be anybody who is under your care. Because there are some people who don't have children. So can they have this kind of blessing from Allah? Yes. Take care of some orphans. Take care of your brother's child, your sister's child. You will get the reward. Waladun Saleh yad'ulah Fellow brother and sister in Islam, we believe because we have seen with our own eye what Dr. Zakir Naik have done in Mumbai. In one of the night, he gathered at least 14 children, maybe more, I forgot. 
I was there. I was sitting like you, sitting down there, watching these 70, for, uh, 14 or 16 children. And everyone is about 13 years old, if I don't forget. And everyone is our double. They become our double. One's children represent Ahmad Didat. One children represent Dr. Zakai Naik, his own son. One children represent Dr. Bilal Philip, Abdul Rahim Gri, Yusuf Esti, and there's also one represent me. All of them become our double. 13 years old, they speak like every one of us. It's a great achievement. If any of you participate in this program and your children become Walad and Saleh, Allah is going to bless you forever, brother and sister. You cannot be like them, maybe. You cannot be like us, but your children can be better than us. Inshallah. As nothing is impossible. The beauty of the knowledge of Islam, if any children have knowledge of Islam, the knowledge of Islam will bring them over the globe. They can travel around the globe. If I am not a Muslim, I cannot be invited to talk to you. I will be staying in Malaysia, finish. I'll go to China, Hong Kong, my homeland, finish. But because of Islam, I travel everywhere. I travel to China, I travel to Taiwan, I travel to Papua New Guinea, I was in Fiji, I was in Tonga, I was in New Zealand, I was in Australia. I was in America, in Canada, Europe, here, Middle East. Why? It's because of La ilaha illallah. You see what La ilaha illallah can do to us? La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasul, can make us become the great ummah. Great people. We don't have to fight for it. Just work for it. For the sake of Allah. At the end of the day, brother and sister, if you want to save yourself from the trial of the grave, remember the ayah that you always recite. Maybe not you, yeah? Because majority of the Muslims in this country are Ahnaf. But the Shafi'i people will always recite. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahya ya. Follow me? We recite together Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahya ya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd Majority of the Muslim in Southeast Asia will recite this dua iftita in the prayer. He said, Oh Allah, all my prayer in the salat, all my namaz, the fard, the sunnah, wa no suki, and all my sacrifice, everything that I do, mahyaya, my life, my death, is only to please you, O oh Allah. Only for you. Because we know we belong to Allah. We are going back to Him. Everything that we receive is from Him. Everything the eye that see is from Allah. The ear that hear is from Allah. Everything belongs to Him. And everything is going back to Him. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Everything comes from Allah and will return back to the owner. He is Malik, Maliki Yawmiddin, the king and the owner in the day of judgment. So fellow brother and sister, once again, I'd like to remind all of you, please don't forget what I say about your preparation for the grave and the hereafter. Don't leave this area tonight without looking for the box. There are some box there now, I saw. There are some box there. Please go towards the box. Not for me. Not for peace, we say, but for Allah's sake. Because they have done a good job. It's our duty to be part of it. And I'm happy that all of you are here. I believe that you are going to be part of it. And I'm going to bring all of you back in my country because I'm going to talk to my people about how good 
the people here yeah how supportive the people here how strong your iman is wherever i go i'm talking about the people in chennai i'm talking about the people in mumbai this is how we become popular you are not there but people are representing you and before i stop for q and a i would like to call all the brother and sister let us make a short prayer a very short prayer for every one of us a prayer that the prophet have taught us a very simple one i'm going to say it slowly and all of you just follow insha allah bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alamin allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidum majid allahumma barik ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad kama barakta ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidum majid allahumma bika amsayna wa bika asbahna wa bika nahya wa bika namut wa ilayka almasir allahumma qfir li hayyina wa mayyitina wa shahidina wa ghaibina wa saghirina wa kabirina wa zakarina wa unthana Allahumma man ahyaytahu minna fa ahyihi al-islam wa man tawaffaytahu minna fa tawaffahu ala al-iman O oh Allah bless our evening and our morning our life and our death and to you we will return O oh Allah forgive the sin of those who are living among us and those who have passed away among us O oh Allah give forgive the sin of those who are present tonight and for those who are absent O oh Allah forgive the sin among us the young and the old the male and the females O oh Allah if you will allow us to live longer on this planet let us live as a good muslim and a practicing muslim and a caller to islam and if you will want to take our life any time O oh Allah make sure that we are prepared and we'll go back to you with iman wal husnil qatima and make our ending the best ending amin ya rabbal alamin subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh ladies and gentlemen at this time we open the floor for questions and answers my favorite part of the evening. We would prefer, insha'Allah, that our Muslim brothers and sisters allow our non-Muslim brothers and sisters the opportunity to answer questions, make statements, or pose criticisms. We as Muslims have many opportunities to meet and greet our scholars and to ask them questions and to have our misconceptions clarified. Opportunities which many of our non-Muslim companions don't have. So we ask you that you allow them the opportunity and give them the encouragement to come to the microphone and ask questions. At this time, inshallah, I will begin the questions. Sir, would you please state your name, your occupation, and then state your question briefly. I am Muhammad Ghaus. By profession, I am a doctor. You said that three things will accompany in the grave. And you yourself said that second thing will be the knowledge you leave it to your children. Whether the knowledge you said is only for religious knowledge or a man leaves some scientific knowledge for the benefit of the humanity to come 
or he finds out some disease and medicines for it and he, he tells to the people whether such knowledge also will give him benefit inshallah yeah where the prophet sallallahu said ilmun yuntafa'u bih the prophet do not just say that the knowledge of akhirah mean any knowledge that can bring benefit to the ummah to mankind inshallah you will be rewarded for that yes zakhallah Rear mic, inshallah, on the brother's side, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Bundu Muhammad Amin. I am a businessman. As you rightly given me speech in your uh, lecture, that there is no life after death. But in, in India, our Hindu brothers are playing in rebirth. They say that after your death, you will burn again. If you do good things, you will be rewarded and you will become a rich man. If you do bad thing, you will be born as donkeys or dogs. Do you please comment? Uh, we do believe what Allah said and what the Prophet have taught us about life after death. We all believe there is a life after this world. The Hindu may also believe, the Chinese believe, everybody believe in it. Only they believe in different ways. Some people believe that by nature, our soul is clean, is pure. After we commit a lot of sin in this earth, when you die, because your soul is so corrupted, so unclean, you cannot go back to nirvana. You cannot go back to where you came from. So that's why they say there is a concept of reincarnation, meaning you will be reborn again in another mother's womb, and then they give you another chance to become a better person. But after some time, after the first, the second of reincarnation, if you still are a bad guy, you die and at the end of the day, you will turn to be an animal. This is what they believe. But this is not uh, from what Allah said, not in the book of Torah, not in the book of Injil, not in the book of Zabur, not in the book of the Quran. So we believe what Allah said is true not what some people say yeah. so we believe there is life after death of course but in the way of what Allah have explained to us alam barza then alam akhirah then it will go to hell and paradise and you will be there forever but other people can believe what they believe that the belief in Islam is the best because it's not something what people say is what Allah the creator have said in the Quran and the sunnah of the prophet so, inshallah, we are safe. We are in the right path. For people who believe that they are going to reincarnate again, they have some belief, but their belief is not in the right path. We hope that Allah will give them guidance and they will follow our belief and all of us will be safe in the hereafter. Inshallah. Amin. We'll now take a question from the sister section. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Asma. I'm a teacher by profession. Brother, you were telling about the first thing that would be asked when you are resurrected. There are many hadiths about this. One of the hadiths I quote earlier is about the ni'mah, na'im. All the bounties that Allah has given you. But there are also other hadiths talk about the amal. This is about the ni'mah. The other hadith the Prophet did say, the first amal that Allah is going to value in the day of judgment is your salat, your namaz. Few, few hadiths, but we are talking from different angle. But my, the hadith that I quote earlier is about na'im, about the ni'mah. Whatever Allah has given you, the ni'mah. Example, the ni'mah of your life. If Allah gives you to live for 50 years, then Allah is going to question you about how do you spend your 50 years? The money that Allah gives you, Allah is going to ask you, how do you spend your money? The same, the knowledge that Allah gives you, what do you do with your knowledge? This is all the ni'mah. That is the question that is going to be asked by Allah. Zakhallah khair. We'll take a question from the young man, inshallah, in the front. Could you please state your name? And I think we all know his occupation, huh? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ahmad. I am a student. K 
can a dead person's relative pray for him read quran does it benefit to him azakallahu khairan ahmad yeah a young boy asks a very very important a uh, question about can when somebody pass away our family our friend can we do something for them yes the prophet said istaghfiru li akhikum anybody pass away the first thing we say is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun saying telling remind ourselves they came from allah and to allah they are returning and then you the prophet said istaghfiru li akhikum ask allah to forgive their soul so we say allahumma qfil lahu allahumma qfil laha yeah you should do that every muslim must do that whether you know him or not when you hear somebody die say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun then make prayer allahumma qfil lahu or allahumma qfil laha but can you recite the quran and present it to him there is no hadith from the prophet to confirm that a lot of muslim is doing that but it's not based on any authentic hadith it's part of the tradition a lot of people is doing do what the prophet recommend us is the best you can pray you don't have to recite quran is for the living not for the dead quran is for people who is alive not for the dead anymore you understand boy Nah, alhamdulillah may allah bless you my son, yeah? this is our son look at him no he is going to be a good son inshallah jazakallah allah ibarik we will now take a question from the men section rear microphone could you please state your name and occupation my name is james rosario and i'm a catholic priest you justly said that each of us after our death we will carry back our deeds but this is uh, for those who believe in eternity what happens to those who don't believe in eternity because we do believe that everyone are sons of god number one fellow brothers we muslim believe that we are the servant of allah we don't call ourselves a son of god because even is a term used here by the people of the book by the christian i was a christian too before of course we always say that we are the son of god the children of god god is our father the reason they use this term actually is to make us feel closer to each other to say servant and lord maybe it's a bit far it's like a servant and a master but if you use the term son children father it make you feel closer but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran forbid us to call ourselves as son or children of god and also don't call him father call him allah call him allah and we are abdullah the servant of allah now whoever die do not believe in the hereafter there is no future for him because he don't believe in that that's why the future is for people who believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have remind us and also Prophet Muhammad have informed us he said la yadkhuluna aljanna hatta tu'minu none of us can enter the paradise that belong to God except for those who believe if they don't believe then there's no future for them people who die without believing in the hereafter there is no future there's no hope they are living in darkness that's why prophet was sent moses was sent abraham was sent noah was sent jesus was sent muhammad was sent to remind us about real life after death so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the heart of those who don't believe in the hereafter to become believer and they die as a believer so that there will be a future for them inshallah what i wanted to know specifically was that problem is in those we we live also with those who don't believe so then their lives here are not transformed in any way because their deeds they don't bother about their deeds yeah we know that we are living among the people who believe and people who are the disbeliever that is why it is our mission it is our duty to call them to believe 
in God. Because there is our mission. We cannot just leave them alone. But if they choose not to follow, nobody can force them. At least in the day of judgment, if Allah asks us, have you conveyed the message? We have done our duty. And Allah said that our responsibility is just to convey the message. If they accept it, it's good for them. If they don't accept it, we will keep on trying and pray for them. And we hope one day they will accept it, inshallah. We'll now take a question from the sister side. Inshallah, sister, could you please state your name and occupation? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to the sister. I'm Inas. I just want to know briefly what happened to the people who do not have natural death? What happened to those souls? Would you please explain what natural death is? Like they do commit suicides. Commit suicide? Yeah. I was reading some hadith lately about people who die committing suicide. What happened is the Prophet do not offer prayer to them. He himself will not offer any prayer to them to show us that he dislike anybody to take their own life because our life don't belong to us it belong to Allah we got to accept the truth that we wait for the time for us to go but the Prophet never forbid other companions to offer the funeral prayer but what will happen to them the Prophet say in the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to punish them for what they have done to themselves. If they use a knife to kill themselves, Allah will give them the same knife and they keep on killing them, poking their body. If they drink poison to kill themselves, Allah will prepare the poison, they keep on drinking, they die, then they will be alive again and they will be they drink the same poison, they go through some suffering. They will have the kind of suffering like what they have done in this world. So we hope that no Muslim will do that. You are not supposed to die without a reason. And you must be very careful in dying. Make the right choice. Because death only one. You hope that you will die for a good reason. I have made up my mind. I have always talked to myself. Oh Allah, please make me die as a good Muslim. Don't make me die when I do something wrong. Because we are human, nobody is perfect. So today you are good, tomorrow maybe you are not that good. But we hope when we go back to Allah, it's a good ending. Husnil Khatimah. So we hope that those who commit this sin, they are still Muslim, but they will be punished by Allah first. And all Muslim, the Prophet said, at the end of the day, because of the iman, the belief they have in God, in Allah, they will go to paradise. Whoever believe in Allah, at the end of the day, they go to paradise. Yeah. So may Allah make us among the people of Jannah. Amin. Ya Rabbul Alam. We'll take the question from the front male mic, inshallah, with the young man, inshallah. Please state his name and occupation. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Sulaiman. I, I'm doing homeschooling. How many years we will stay in the grave? How many years? No one knows. That's not important for us, son. Yeah? It's not important for us to know how many years. The year over there is not the same like the year on this earth. But everybody actually who is down there now is sleeping after the question, the trial of the grave. They are in the world of Barzakh. They are there. Barzakh means they are in a waiting world between Kubur and Akhirah. There is Barzakh. Barzakh means there is a wall that stops them from entering the day of judgment. So everyone now actually is just sleeping. Those good persons who die, Allah give them big space like a big room, superior room. Yeah? 
and then with aircon you know, alhamdulillah they can take rest you know? but those who are bad people they also are there but in a very small room without aircon and darkness and for those good people who have died Allah will op command the, the door of paradise to be opened so that they can see in their dream the one who is dead is like sleeping and they have a good dream but for the bad soul they will be there and they will always have bad dream because the door of hell is going to open for them and then they can see and they are suffering now why they suffer because they know at the end of the day they are going to go to hell why the other soul will be very happy because they know at the end of the day they go to paradise so about how long only Allah knows my son okay alhamdulillah and I remind our non-muslim guests yes. you may see the cues looking long to you but you have the priority at the microphone if you have a question you can go to the front of the line so if there are any non-muslims who have a question you can go to the front of the line brother could you please state your name and occupation and then your question assalamu alaikum my name is Salim Ahmad wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah I'm a banker my nowadays in a surah yasin it is said that on the day of resurrection everybody will be risen up from the graves and those who rise from the grave they will ask a question who has uh, disturbed us from our slumber does it mean that nothing happens in the grave from our day of death to day of resurrection Jazakallahu khair. now Allah remind us about the reality of alam Barzah is a waiting world. Actually, after the Q&A from Munkar and Nakir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is some kind, some form of punishment in the grave. That's all that I can say to you, brother. Zakhullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Samrin. I'm a student. My question is, what happens to those people who die due to tsunami or burn away or those die due to natural calamities where they are not buried into the earth the prophet sallallahu have informed us signs of good ending sign of good death one of the signs of husnil khatima if people die uh, because of flood like tsunami People die because of fire, like there's a burning, and then they're caught in the building and they die in the fire. And people also who die when the building collapses on them. There are many signs, at least 19 signs. I have a book talk about this sign. This is a small booklet that talk about the people who die with a good ending. Now in this small book, I have wrote about 19 the Prophet have given us 19 signs of good ending so whoever die in that situation and they believe in Allah they are dying as a shaheed yeah even to us we feel eerie why we don't even find their body but Allah know best yeah Allah know best now what is important we must prepare ourselves it's just like what if you are even the sign the prophet said if the mother while giving birth to a baby the woman pass away she die as a shahida but she must believe in Allah of course the people who have caught in the tsunami if they don't believe in Allah it's too bad for them so that's why the Muslim is being warned being reminded to always prepare yourself because death will come anytime so the sign if they believe in Allah they die because of the tsunami there is a good sign the sign of good ending may Allah bless their soul and may Allah replace them with a better life in this world Amin brother at the front mic inshallah no. you can please uh, state your name and your occupation inshallah then briefly state your question. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. My name is Dani Shaftab. My question is that in your speech you have told that to teach your children a lot of things. In that you have mentioned about Fatiha. What's that Fatiha? Can you explain it? 
No, anything, I'm just quoting example. Even the little that you can do, you may not memorize a lot of the Quran, but you memorize Surah Al-Fatiha, you pass that Surah, you teach, you pass it down, you teach somebody, your children, or anybody, and now they learn Fatiha from you. So this is the knowledge that you have passed down to them. So when they recite Surah Al-Fatiha in their namaz, in their prayer, you will get the reward. That is the meaning of the hadith. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Myself, I'm Shabreen and I'm student of engineering in information technology. There is a custom of giving bath to dead. But if, like for my grandmother, the doctor declared that none of us should touch her body even for giving a bath. So in that case, even if we wanted, we could not give her a bath and just made her body perform ablution alone, that is vodu, and we buried her. Is there any sin or guna on us? And because we didn't give her a bath, do we have to do anything else? For the brothers and the sisters, all of us know our basic responsibility that the Prophet have command us if somebody pass away, so the living must do the minimum is to wash the body. The body must be washed, not just take ablution. And I do not know why this thing happened, but if it happened, the whole community will be responsible for that because washing the body is fardu kifaya. If somebody does it, the rest, alhamdulillah, will free from their responsibility. It's a fardu kifaya. We cannot do I mean, just take ablution because the Prophet wants you to wash the body. That the best person to wash the body of your parent is you. If the mother, then the daughter. But if you can't, then get another Muslim lady who have the knowledge about washing the dead body. That should be done by the Muslim Ummah. Yeah, this is the first time I heard if a Muslim pass away. Yeah, Zakallah. Okay. The second part of that question was actually, uh, is there anything that we need to do in no. order to compensate for that? Yeah, the past is the past. What can you do if you have buried her, there's nothing you can do. You just ask Allah to forgive those who are, are still alive, who have not carried out their responsibility as what they must do. It's not her sin. It's our sin for not carrying out our responsibility. Because learning how to wash the body is a knowledge of fardu kifaya. There must be somebody among the lady who have that knowledge. There must have somebody among the men that have the knowledge. When the time comes, somebody must act upon it. So, again, I will just say, if the person has been buried, so we can't do much. Allah will forgive her and she has no sin because of that, because she can't do anything for herself. Only the living commit a sin and may Allah forgive those who forget to wash her body now. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that she was declared to suffer from tetanus. So none of us are supposed to touch her because even we were uh, afraid to get infected. But I got to clear this matter is important. Now, if the dead person is being confirmed, carry certain kind of virus or disease, and you are not allowed, anybody also is not allowed to get close, there is a time Allah said, Fattakallah mastataktum. Do whatever you can. Do whatever you can. You don't have to worry about that. But if purposely you, have, you are able to do something, you don't do it, you will be responsible for that. But if there's a reason, Allah knows best. Yeah? Zakallahu khair. Spread the word, oh man. Spread the word of Islam. Oh, fortune one, paradise must be won. Paradise must be won each day and each night through darkness and through light. Cry it out to the world, spread the word.